Well, it has certainly been a while, and welcome back to SNG Experience. Of course, a lot of you know we went to France. That was three weeks ago now, and there hasn't been a video since before we went to France, and I'm very much apologize for that, but we have been so busy with our production, but something is there, and uh, clients and projects that it's been very difficult, even with everybody we have working here, to keep up with it. Now, I'm not going to go on a great deal about France, except that it was incredible. It is incredibly beautiful in France. France, we love you. We love the people. We love the countryside. We just, it was wonderful. The ship, the Viking, was amazing. It was like being on a Starfleet vessel. It was that clean and nice, and the food, and just, it, I, I could go on all day. So I'm not. It was wonderful. We had a great time. Windows 7, that's right. I still use it. Uh... <laughs> So, uh, without uh, going on a bunch, I'm going to show you some of the things that have been going on uh, the last couple of weeks, little bits and tidbits, and a little bit of what's, uh, what we experienced in France, and uh, predominantly uh, I want to feature, because Memorial Day is coming up, and remember, Memorial Day is not just a holiday for getting together with your family and having a day off, having a three-day weekend. It's about remembering the men and women that fought so we could be free, so we could be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. We greatly thank everyone who ever had an involvement with that uh, for your service, for your lives, uh, and for our freedom. And we did go to the memorial at uh, Omaha Beach, and I'll show you a little bit of that. It was very somber, to say the least. So, without further ado, let's get on with the show. And again, welcome back. Welcome back to SND! Yes, we're back in France, and I'm starting to wake up finally after being jet lagged. And, oh God, we'll go into it another time. Uh, I've been a train wreck for the past two days. Uh, I'll explain it later. But the gang's back. There's John over there, and of course, you know hey. this guy, and Giselle, and they've, they've made a mold of the other, uh, what we refer to as G-Man, this rather grim looking character here. And this, of course, is the latex mask, and it's just very rough. It has to be uh, deceived and dewormed and, de and all that <laughs> painted. And so they have made, completely without any help from me whatsoever, uh, this two-piece mold, uh, like this one, to make the other mask, and I must say, you guys done a really good job. Yes. Really good. And all on your own, so now I know anytime I want, I can throw a mold at you. And I'll get it made so I don't have to. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Sounds so Paul has now done his second mold, and uh, Antonita's here, look. <laughs> and uh, he just pulled the mold apart, and you can see how cleanly it came apart, because the sculpture is still sitting on uh, Jen's life cast, so that tells me the mold was made very, very proper. Very proper. It's a proper mold. Thank you. Yeah, no, a really, really nice, but pretty mold, and it really came apart easy, and you did everything right. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You just graduated. <laughs> I mean, look at that. And you see, of course, with my my brilliant. Uh, method of putting, guidance, of, yeah. of putting, no, of putting <laughs> the, acry the acrylic covering on this. Oh, yeah. You see how much easier the clay comes away from the mold. So we didn't uh, have any problems here? Nope. Nope. Pretty nice. Yeah, there's a little bit of chipping around there, but I think that should uh, be. That's, should yeah, be that's okay. way up inside. Yeah. yeah, no bubbles. Very nice job. Oh, the ears came actually really well. Yeah, we didn't break her ears either, did yeah. we? Yeah. No, it's amazing. You, We've got you a, little, can... a tiny little bit of patching to do here. And, right here. Yeah, yeah well, that's but... where the undercut is. And... Yeah. So I, I just can I do this? Can okay, I pull this off? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. There. Oh, that was not on yeah. Jen's. That's that's on. Uh... Oh, um... Yeah. Look how well that came out. Mary. <laughs> so here we are on Friday, and we got John here sculpting a Planet of the Apes ears for the uh, the Planet of the Apes makeup. Over here, remember we did this? Uh, and this is the first, what, this is like the first real thing you've sculpted, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's really <laughs> amazing. It really is. That's incredible. Uh, and over here we got uh, Paul 
working on his mask, of course, now in latex, and he's gotten rid of the seam, and what a great job he's done at doing that. This is really looking great. Thank you. Yeah. And Antonina's over here working on the fingers and putting nails yes. on and stuff, which is looking really good because I've been noticing them over here. So these are real nails, see? Which, oh, in camera, which are really, really good. Thank you. So it's kind of quiet around here since I got back from the trip to France, which really took a hell of a lot out of me. I'm still not fully recovered five days later from jet lag and being tired. It was exhausting, but worth it because while we were there, it was wonderful. Uh, but I'm having a hard time getting back with the steps. I think a nice weekend of uh, two days doing nothing. I'll be back to my old self on a good day. But these guys are doing great work without me, and that's really, really uh, gratifying. So <laughs> you've all learned and learned well. <laughs> So, and plus this mold, I mean, this mold came out so good. We don't, I think we showed that yesterday, but it, uh, it really came out nice. And that was for an Antonita sculpture that she did of the G-Man. So we're, we're gonna test this again. Uh, Bob Demick, thank you so much, Bob, sent me a whole new set of seals. Cause this, this is about five years old. We did have a leak in it. So he sent new boots, new seals, put them all in. And it appears, I just did a series of tests very carefully, one with uh, nothing running at all, no electrical power hooked up whatsoever. Pushed it down in the water, watch what goes on, uh, no leaks, dry it off, no leaks. So then we run just the radio system, the up and down, the right and left, the motor. Check it again, no leaks. Then we ran the pump, we ran a little bit of water in it first, check the pump, make sure no water is ending up in the pump section. Then we did it all the way to the top where the sensor tells it to turn off the pump. All that was just fine. So uh, we're gonna do an actual, uh, 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 I should dive now because we got the battery strapped on. Uh, it's amazing how heavy these things are and how well they float. It's all about buoyancy. So now we're pumping water in. If you come up here, Paul, you can see the water pumping into the tank. And as the tank fills with water, of course, this gets heavier. And I don't know if it'll dive with just the battery connected to it. You notice my wonderful vacuum watertight battery holder. So it works very, very well. We may have to stick a weight on top of this to get it to actually dive. There's a sensor at the top of the tank right there. And that, well, when the water touches that, that tells it, well, I've got enough water in the tank. And you can see it going lower and lower and lower. This was a submarine, it would be already underwater. It hits the sensor, it goes off. So we do have a leak and it's it's in the bellows. You can clearly see it there. Can you get that, Paul? Oh yeah. So we need a new bellows. Uh, and he just sent us one. Well, we have this on here and it, it does uh, dive, everything's fine. Uh, I'm gonna bring it back up. Then we're going to pump the water out. As we do, this will come back up. That weight's going to go flying off and fall to the bottom. But you see, it comes back up just fine. So, that's good. Okay, it turned out that there actually was a leak in the brand new... Uh, where is it? There it is over here. This was a brand new bellows and it was definitely leaking. The interesting thing about the leak was is the only way that the leak appeared is that there was pressure in the cylinder. The only time that there's pressure in the cylinder is when water is pumped into this section and there's a tiny little pinhole right there. See that? See, you see there it is. Right, right here. That's a hole. To relieve pressure, as the water is coming up in here, there's pressure building in here. It's got to go somewhere. So it goes here and it goes here. And that pressure also will get into here. Then a bubble would appear. But it wouldn't leak water. It only leaked air. It was the weirdest thing. So I replaced it with another bellows and that stopped that. Then the way the water was getting in here, I had forgot about that little vent. If the cylinder is leaned, if this is a cylinder, like this, 
and there's a lot of water in here, it will dribble some into there. That's where the leak was coming from. Now, we don't dive submarines like this. We dive them like this, and they maybe do this and that, but they rarely get like this. And so you never have a problem with that. And I had forgot. So there was no leak up here, as it turned out. Everything's fine. That was normal that it leaked some water from there, and we had a leaky bellows. Right, Paul? Leaky bellows. It took us, what, about a couple hours to figure all that out? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was a couple hours. Yeah, it was. But so everything's fine. And it's the way that Bob cylinders work, which are the best there are still. This was just a freak that we would send me a brand new bellows and it had a hole in it. Who knew? So, uh, but we did. We figured it out. So now this is all perfect and nice. Now we're going to wait for a nice day and take this to a pond or something and run it one last time uh, for the owner and then send it on its merry way to his house. Yeah. So yes, we are doing Brandon Stacy's uh, ears for Star Trek Phase 2, which is James Colley's uh, production being directed by Darren Docterman, our good friend Darren Docterman. He's a wonderful director and a wonderful human being. So yes, those are the ones that you want to run. So we got Paul for us, should have his in the mail by now. And over here we have Giselle, who's uh, over her a little bout with some bad shrimp. And <laughs> And down here we have Alex and she's working on teeth for the Planet of the Apes makeup. These are the ones that uh, Antonina did and now she's working on the top ones that fit in there and what? Oh, and here's Antonina's, we're going over actually inside for a second. Uh, this is Antonina's mask uh, and you're seeing the actual mold and this is the rubber which is, which is getting Almost ready. Almost ready to pull out, as you can see. So we can't wait to see that. But it is, wow, yeah, it really is. It's pulled away pretty well. So let's try that out a little bit more, and then we can look at a mask. Uh, so, Paul, what are you doing? Uh, this is my uh, face and front. So yeah, it's your right first yeah. frame. It looks very good. I like the paint job. Very natural. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, pretty creepy guy. I can't wait to get the, the, uh, the eyes. The eyes in. Yeah. yeah those black yeah. eyes will really set it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I so know. I can't wait. The creepier, well, the creepier tomorrow, the better. Tomorrow you're going to learn about eyes. That's, you're going to learn how to paint like, those and make irises yeah. in uh, Photoshop. You're yeah. going to make the irises up and then put them in the back of those clear plastic and that will, you know, and I'll show you all of that, so. Over here, did we cover this already? I don't know if we did. We didn't get this on video. We, this is Antonina's mask, uh, which just came out of the mold. And it's drying now, and it came out really nice. Got a couple little bubbles in it, but easily fixed. Over here, we got Planet of the Apes teeth going on um, to go with John's ears. And more ears for Brandon Stacy for Star Trek Phase 2. Well, here it is. It's a Wednesday, and the gang's all here. We have Paulina, Paulina back today, and Paulina just uh, has been hand painting the irises that go in the uh, in the eyes for uh, our G-men and for Giselle's devil makeup over there, as we call it. And they're just gorgeous. She just hand painted these, and uh, we're going to get these eyes going today. And she's been using really good reference. And she's got a dog. <laughs> surprise, surprise. No, yeah. yeah. Those are beautiful, Paulina. Those Thank are really, you. really nice. Great job. Thank you. And then um, John here and Antonina just opened up our ears for uh, for uh, Brandon Stacy for Star Trek Phase Two. And you can see these things are absolutely freaking wonderfully gorgeous. I really like this. Uh, um, polyurethane skin flex. I know a lot of you look at this and think, oh, that must be silicone. Well, it's not. And I wish they still made this material because you can see how good the edges are by the transparency of them. And uh, this is so much easier to get out of the mold. We don't need any encapsulation. We can glue this directly to someone's skin without having any need for baldies on the inside. And we don't need baldies on the outside because you can just paint this with urethane paint and you're done. And then makeup. So it's a shame they stopped making this stuff. I bought up all that's left, and uh, there's a bit more at Berman's I will hopefully get. But those really came out great. So Paulina is still working on the the eyes, which are beautiful. Thank you so much for doing these today. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah.
really really good and over here you can see we just put up in about a half hour it took us to build this flat and the flat is made out of three one by threes there's one Paul three. one by three yeah one by three one by three yeah. and this is ten dollar a sheet uh, what this is is ten dollar sheet poly uh, styrene expanded foam uh, for insulation it's like ten dollars a sheet for this stuff and on this side we have a beginnings of a stone wall that uh, and that doesn't mean we're going to get stone it means that we're going to actually carve into this bricks and carve them out so not bricks but stones so it's a uh, so it will look like a uh, wall uh, to a churchyard that was made a long time ago out of stones by medieval people so because this scene takes place in Ireland back around the turn of the century so we're building two of these that will be in an L shape I love my L shape walls uh, remember that I love our L shape room <laughs> remember what that was from no. some of the fans will I loved our L shaped room yeah Gene Wilder said the line Anyway, somebody will figure it out on the net. Uh, we're going to have two of these that will be in an L, and there's going to be a ledge down here. You've probably seen it in the videos I've been running, which is where Giselle is going to be sitting in her creepy makeup that we've done for her, so, that the eyes are for. Very cool. That took a half hour. Half an hour. Good job. We are back, and it is Thursday. And we have Paulina, and she's working on Planet of the Apes teeth, which are really, really nice. Really good job. We've got more ears for uh, Brandon Stacy for Star Trek Phase 2 and James Colley. And here we have the beginnings of our churchyard set. Uh, and this is all going to look like a stone wall when we're done, right, Paul? And you can see, you know, what we had done. Uh, and really, these are lightweight, they're just two clamps holding this whole thing together. But it's, it's really solid, it's not going anywhere. Uh, and we can break it down very quickly because we've got to put up another set on the same day. So this one will be done first and then, yeah, yeah. Gotta mark it all out. Yeah, yeah. We gotta mark it all out now and start making it look like an old stone wall. What are we? So Paul's still uh, tracing out uh, very small rocks and very big rocks. And because uh, that's what these drunken Irishmen did when they built these walls. Yeah. We know for a fact because here's an actual picture of a uh, wall built in Ireland for a church. So we're replicating the same thing and, I, and I've been going around with the acetone doing this with a brush and we're going to do more of that of course tomorrow and then paint all this to look like that stone wall there. Pretty amazing, huh? And all this was done in what? Really about a day and you know, can't count yesterday. It took us a half hour to build the first yeah, flat. It took, us, it took us less than an hour to build the actual walls. Yeah, it did. And then this, this is probably taking longer, so it's just taking I mean, it really hours. doesn't take that long either. Were there two, three people doing it? Yeah, two or three people doing it tomorrow with a cup and some acetone and a disposable brush, and we'll have this done, and we can paint it. And Oh, it's going to be wonderful. We have to build a ledge, though, that she sits on. It is just crazy here. It is Friday. I really hoped I would have got a show up this week, but it looks like it's going to be next week because I forgot to edit it because we're that busy. Out here, we have a whole bunch of crazy people helping us uh, build the uh, continuation of the great wall of Ireland here. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mike, thanks for coming and helping us. Uh, and we got everybody except Antonina who's painting her mask that she made for our show. Very nice, very nice. Uh, and so we're getting the primer coat on the stone. As you can see here, it really looks like a real stone wall, but we have to do uh, the mortar between, which is a lighter color, aging, lichen, uh, green stuff, all kinds of stuff to really make this look right. Uh, but it's a good start. And we did all this in freaking two days. Yes, two days, imagine that. So. Uh, this is how we're going to end our Friday, and I promise next week there'll be a show because you'll know that because you'll be watching it. Welcome back. Yep. Uh, the uh, what is it? It's uh, th Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, yeah, sushi night. Um, we are uh, of course here at the studio, and we're working on all kinds of things. Antonina's fixing molds. Antonina's running 
uh, ears. And we found out uh, while we're at Berman's yesterday doing our field trip to Berman's and to, uh, uh, actually we went to Rob Berman's house too and saw a studio. We're using this now, F125, which is uh, basically a replacement for SkinFlex. Now I was told that SkinFlex wasn't made anymore by BJB. Oh, we don't have anything like that anymore. It a reaction to the skin and this and that and yada yada. I was like, great, because you know what? This stuff works so good for, uh, as you've seen in this video, uh, for doing ears that we don't have to do the encapsulation. And there's so many, I think I probably talked about it before. We don't have to uh, worry about how to glue it on. We don't worry about how to paint it. You just pour it in, out it comes. It's, it's wonderful. And now this stuff is supposed to be very similar and works the same. So we'll see. Over here, Paul, yay! Hey. He's uh, working on the wall. Haha. <laughs> and then, and, and so we should be actually playing Pink Floyd right now. But uh, you can see that one's all painted, but of course it hasn't been weathered or any of that kind of stuff. And Rosie's very happy. And uh, this one's going to be, we're primering it first. It takes a long time. Then we're going to weather it and make it look like it's supposed to be. Now over here you may have noticed, floating around in the background, the Enterprise molds, which I said no longer were any good to make any more product out of. Well, the small mold parts certainly aren't, but as it turns out, these are actually all in pretty good condition still. Now we have the odd bad spot like that. And uh, this was from when Rosie got her ball inside the mold. Yeah, I know. But we can still lay a product in there, uh, you know, which is going to be good. These are fine. The pylons, this is the other engineering section. These are in fabulous condition, uh, the saucer mold. So, uh, especially now that they're clean and I've gone back underneath here and cleaned out everything that goes under. Why is this out of focus? Oh, now it's focus again. I think the camera's drunk again. But uh, now that that's all clean and everything fits back in the way it should, it feels very smooth and even without any warps. There's a little tiny bit of something going on over there, but overall, I think we're really good. Now, you're probably wondering why I've got these out and why I'm fixing them. Well, you guessed it. Here's the... Uh, 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 nacelle molds, that's it, yes. Um, and one of the original masters for one of the intercoolers because we're going to make new molds of these. These are what the molds are really the worst for. So yes, uh, a nice gentleman has asked me to build one of these for him and uh, he can afford it and uh, he's a great appreciator of it. In fact, he has one of the uh, uh, Christie's auction original models from Star Trek in his collection as well and uh, so we're making them one <laughs> right in the middle of making the show but we're going to do it we've got plenty of help and these guys are going to learn how to lay up fiberglass because we're going to be making it out of West Systems which is my favorite epoxy see I'm wondering why we have two gallons of it but it's good <laughs> and we're going to be laying in the epoxy and then fiberglass cloth and make a very thin very lightweight uh, model because uh, he might want to hang it from the ceiling and plus we will have no warpage issues like we did with 10 60, uh, 1630 uh, it won't be all lumpy inside and it'll be all even and beautiful just like a model aircraft fuselage or a boat fuselage for an RC boat so this is going to be a really good model. Uh, it's going to be cannon, so there won't be any uh, bridge, there won't be any uh, windows you can see through, and no open hangar van. I know that disappoints all of you, but this man wants a cannon ship. He likes cannon Star Trek, and so do I. So here we have Colby, who's come to join us to work on his tricorder project, which is right over here. Over here, we're uh, getting ready to uh, fiberglass up a whole uh, lower hull section. And John's going to do that. Paul's going to watch, and we're going to get back to that. And Rosie's going to do whatever it is she does. Hmm. John See you and now. I are having fun with plastics, the modern <laughs> age materials. Uh, we are making up a lower uh, saucer section. Okay, we're going to make sure we're right. It's hard to. 
doesn't it? It's about right, isn't it? It should be. We've got the excess on both sides. And uh, just, you know, so heavy. Because you have, it just, it's brushable and it's so thick going in. Uh, it gives you great detail. Gonna so this is the center in first. So this is the second layer going down. Second layer going in. And this one's a little trickier because it's on top of the other one. Wet one. Okay, so here we got our uh, our glass, and it's looking pretty wet still. So John wants to take paper towel and serve some of that up. We've also been using the credit card technique to scrape it up, but the stuff's going off so fast because we're using a fast catalyst that it's kind of hard to do that. But I'm actually glad we're using the fast catalyst. So John has now laid up. I helped him, but not much at all. He's got this down, don't you, John? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is the top of the saucer, and uh, this is, it's not as dry as I wanted to get it, but uh, it's going to be fine. So um, it started to go off on us rather quickly. I'm using the fast uh, catalyst, and it went off a lot faster than I thought, but it's fine. So it's nice, even thickness. It's going to be very strong. I'm going to pop this out tomorrow, and this one we will have a saucer section. Yay! And then we're going to go over here, and we're going to lay up these, this, and these here and that will give us all that. These are going to be done in solid uh, polyurethane resin with uh, channel stock running through it in aluminum. So it's coming out really good. And over here, yay, it's all gray. Look at that. Just about. See a little white spot showing here and there. But we're going to start putting on some lighter colors to it and starting to make this thing pop. I can't wait to see that. It's so busy here. Remember when we first started, it was just Mary and I? Uh, or was that Mary and me? Yeah, Mary and me. Anyway, <laughs> they, uh, we're now getting lighter colors on this wall, and you can see now it's starting to look like a real wall. But, but shortly, we're gonna put on some browns and some greens. We'll put some greens on it, like this, see? Beautiful. Yeah, it is. Well, here's, uh, it's pretty much there, get a little bit more, and what we're going to do is get some of this uh, right here, which the real walls have, and we're going to uh, put it through here. Not a lot, but a bunch of it, which I think yeah. will really look cool. So, and then what's left is showing the highlights. And, uh, well, the yeah, the really well, basically this set, this set's pretty much done. Now we're yeah. going to, we're going to, look at it in the dark, which is how it's going to be shot. Oh my goodness, that is just so terrific. Just amazing. Uh, just really amazing. Good job! It's amazing what you can do with polystyrene. Yeah! $10 a sheet. We yeah. only used, uh, that was $40 to uh, $50 roughly we spent on that and the wood. These sets cost us about $150. Okay, so we're building more sets for our grandfather's uh, den. There's the foam that we use, and uh, we got our sheet plastic for the windows, and uh, a bunch of wood here, and molding for the window frame. And these guys are working on uh, doing more painting. You haven't put any of the green stuff yet, eh? No, no, we'll do that last. Do it last. So yeah, we're just going to put in some of the red highlights and the brick. Line that up, and then we're going to go in with the lichen and foliage at the end. Lichen and foliage? Yeah. yeah there's a lichen and foliage right here. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. For example. Oh yes, well yeah, I know. I, that was just that little bit I put in yesterday. Mm -hmm. right? It's really cool. But it looks exactly, well that, you know, that's what it's in that package. Is that's, exactly. It's that's the same, same thing. Cereal. This is a real thing, not, uh, it's, uh, it was a living plant or fungus. <laughs> so, uh, John, you want some help? Uh, maybe, it looks like I bent this piece. No, they're bent, they're warped a bit. It's not gonna hurt us. They just, the, the wood is. I mean, is, the, the sides are square. <laughs> yeah.
here we are in Le Andele, uh, another town on the sign. And uh, we're going to see Richard the Lionhearts, right? Richard the Lionhearts? Yes. Castle, which is right there, right outside our window. I mean, God, amazing. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on it here, but we're going to be really right up there. But just to give you an idea of what the countryside looks like around here, I'm going to try to do a nice slow zoom, a nice pan, which didn't work out too well. And you can just see how incredible this old town is. And these buildings are all the original buildings built uh, just off a of gas, I'd say, around the 1400s to 1500s. Some of them a little newer. Amazing. And of course, another cathedral back there. And there's the rooster, which is a symbol of France. I'm sorry, France. Uh, just amazing. Really, really amazing. Beautiful. I believe we're at Judo. We're on our way to Omaha. I think yeah, it is. It's where the museum is. Look, yeah. look over here. Uh, yes, the oh, museum's yeah, down yeah. there, which we decided not to go museum. into. Yeah, because we only had a little bit of time here. We wanted to look at just some of the sites here. And it said Museum of Disembarkment. Right. Well, because all those structures you see out there, that was the artificial harbor, what's left of it, that was made out of these huge floating concrete uh, pillars that were made in England and then pulled over by ships while there was fighting going on here and they dropped these in to protect and make this harbor. the rumble put on the beach. There are two that are original. Yeah, yeah. Hedgehogs here and then you have the pictures and then behind you see this is a Belgian gate. So this gate here that you can see that is another obstacle the rumble put on the on the beaches. So, so Belgian gates, Czech hedgehogs and then barbed wire, then nutcracker. Then
So here we are on our last day. We're just getting ready to head on out here and uh, go back to the uh, United States of America and get mauled by our dogs who will be absolutely crazy to see us. You can see here we are on, this, on the sign, sun, and the uh, sun has not come up yet. It's, oh, I don't know, about 10 to 6. Sure is beautiful, though. Ducks and swans and people in tents on the bank who are fishing. It's been a great trip, and uh, wow, that does it for us here at SNG in, in Paris. In, in, in Paris. <laughs> we see you next time. Au back, in the, back in the studio. <laughs>